In this mid-journey tutorial, you will go from beginner to advanced. And we'll start very easy step by step with account creation to tips and tricks to more advanced prompts. Of course, you can skip ahead in the timestamps down below, but now let's get started. First, you go to discord.com. I'll also leave a link to that in the description. And then you click on login. And from this page here, you can click on register and start creating your account. And here just fill out everything. <laughs> and don't mind the words, they are in German. You can probably tell by my accent that I'm from Germany. Just fill it out and then you can start creating your account. Okay, once the account is created, we need to confirm that we are human, of course. So we'll just do that real quick. And now we are on Discord. Let me switch that to English real quick. And now the last thing we want to do is to confirm our email address as it says in the green bar up top. So let's go there. And here we are in the confirmation email and of course you just click on verify email and it automatically sends you back to Discord. And now that we have done that, let's join Midjourney. For that you need to go to midjourney.com, link in the description again. And then when you're here you click on join the beta. You will be automatically forwarded and then you just click on accept invite. And here of course we need to check if we are human again. So let's do that real quick. And in Discord at the top left corner you have now the mid journey symbol. You click that now and it brings you right here. And you can read through these notes if you want to, a little bit of information about version 5 and a few other things. When you scroll up you also see a few commands that you can use. But let's go ahead and use it right now ourselves. And for that you want to come over to this left sidebar here, scroll down and find a newbies channel. Now you join one of these newbies channels by clicking it and beware they are pretty full so there's a lot of stuff going on there. It's easy to get lost. But when you're on the channel you can start creating your own images. You just do that by typing slash, then you see a list of commands. We type in slash imagine, there you have the prompt and you can type in the prompt that you want. Let's try a dog skiing down a mountain and see what it gives us. Now as you can see here, before we can start creating we need to accept the terms of service. So we just click on accept TOS and then we can finally start. A little bit of more information down here and as you can see messages for you or from you are always in yellow. So this is how you can find your stuff that you create. You can read through that but let's finally type in our first prompt. A dog skiing down a mountain. And you can see it is waiting to start, it's quite busy, you can see all the other pictures in here. Alright, now you can see how it slowly starts creating four different images and then you can choose the best one for upscale or make variations. I'll show that to you in just a moment. Okay, when they are done the message gets sent to the bottom so it's a little bit chaotic. But you can see all the other images. One good thing that you can do is just look at what kind of images you like and see what prompts they used. So you can use some of the keywords for yourself when you make your own images. And as you can see your message is always in yellow so you can find your images. Let's look at them. Alright, they aren't even that bad. Well, a little bit of funky stuff going on there. I think I really like the, the fourth image. Now we have the images 1, 2, 3, 4 in that order and this is important when we look now down here. You can see U1, U2, U3, U4, V1, V2, V3 and V4. This is to either upscale it or to make variations of it. So let's make variations of image 4 and see what it gives us. Okay, we need to scroll down again to find our image. Ah, there it is. Okay, you can see it creates four variations. And when it's done, it posts it at the end again. So yeah, there's a lot going on in here. There we go, our four variations. And well, I actually think I like the one before that better. But anyway, let's just upscale one of these now. I think I like the third one the most. We'll click on U3 and the image gets upscaled, which also takes a while again. As you can see here, upscaling image waiting to start. And there we go, you can see how Midjourney starts to upscale our image. So it's at 0%, let's wait till that's done. Scrolling all the way to the bottom again. And there is our upscaled image, so let's look at that. Doesn't look too bad, you can save it by just making a right click and then save picture as. And that's how you take your first steps with Midjourney. Now depending on when you watch this video, the free trial may or may not work. So let's have a brief look now on how you can subscribe to Midjourney. 
And for that, you want to go in any room with the mid-journey bot in it. So it can be a newbies room, but any room with the bot in it works. And then you just type slash subscribe. And when you've done that, you can see that you get the link with the subscription page. So you just click on that. And then you see the different billing plans. Let's turn that from yearly to monthly. And here you go. You see the basic plan for $10. Limited generation, I mean it's okay, but yeah, not that much. And then you have the other plan, the $30 plan. And this is a really, really good one, because here you get 15 hours, fast generation with very good and limited relaxed generations. So you basically have unlimited generations with that plan. But yeah, let's say you want to subscribe for $10, you just click here obviously, and then it redirects you to the payment page. And over here you can just fill out your details. I will not do that right now for obvious reasons, but yeah, you just fill it out, click on subscribe, and then you can start using Midjourney. Good, now that we have done that, let's look at a few useful tips, tricks, and commands you definitely should know when using Midjourney. The very first thing you want to look at is how to put the Midjourney bot in your own Discord channel. It's really annoying when there's so much going on and you see all the other posts and can barely find your own pictures. So first we go over here and just click on add server. Then you click on create my own for me and my friends. And then you can change the name of the server into whatever you want. Let's call that AI art for now. And you've created your own server. Uh, no, not now, we don't need this. And then we go back to Midjourney to get the bot into our server. Now when we are back in Midjourney, we need to go to one of the newbie channels where the bot is in. If you don't see it, just click on show members list right on top here. And there you see the list with a Midjourney bot on the bottom. Now you just click on the Midjourney bot. And there you can see add to server right away. So you just click on that and then you choose the server you want to add the bot to, which is of course the AI channel I just created. So you choose that, click on continue, then you click on authorize and then you just need to confirm that you're human. So let's do that real quick. All right, and when that's done, you can go back into your server and there at the right, you see the mid journey bot in there. Now you can create your own channels for whatever art you want to create. Let's just create the channel testing things right here and let's get into testing some things. As you can see the Midjourney bot is there at the right so let's just test it with Imagine and let's do something um, whatever you want. Let's try that and there we go. The Midjourney bot starts to edit the prompt so it all worked just fine. All right, and after we've done this, the next thing you should know are a few different commands. Of course, you know the command slash imagine, which is the standard command you use with Midjourney, but there are a few other ones you should know. For example, slash settings. And of course, with that command, we are opening the <laughs> settings. All right, and there are a few important things here. First of all, you can see you can change a Midjourney version. We are using version five right now. The next thing you can choose is the style from low to high and the higher you go the more well um, creatively free <laughs> mid journey will be with your prompts. Then you see also I have some remix mode activated which I would recommend for you and what that does is when you have a picture like this one or variations you click on make variations and then you get this editing field where you can edit after you've done the picture. So let's change purple with red here and see what it gives us instead. And another thing you see down here in the settings is fast mode and relaxed mode. I've used all my fast hours so I'm relaxed and I'll show that to you with another command. Let's type slash info and here you get some information about what you're doing. And here you can see how much fast time you have remaining. As you can see for me <laughs> it's zero. Not anymore. I have my relaxed time. And you can see that one job is currently running and how long it's running already. Alright, let's dismiss these messages. And for you to remember is slash info and slash settings. And I'll speed the process up here quite a bit because as I said image generation in the relaxed mode really takes quite a while. 
And as you can see here, when you use the remix mode, it always uses the base of the picture that you remix with. So it didn't change the purple flowers into red ones, it just added a few red touches. So it's really just to, when you get something that you want to edit a little bit, to change up a few things. Now let's talk about how to find some inspiration and some cool commands that you maybe want to use for yourself. The first thing I'd recommend is that you go into the Midjourney server and then you go to one of the newbie channels and then you really just scroll through it and see whatever you like, what you think looks cool. And when you see something that you really like, just look at what kind of prompt they use and then play around with it, use it for yourself, change a few words, change a few things, but this is a way to really get some inspiration for yourself. And do you have sometimes moments where you think, oh, this picture looks so cool. I wonder how I could prompt that in mid-journey. Well, you can actually do that now. Type just slash describe and you can let the mid-journey bot describe any picture that you find or that you have. So let's test that with one picture that I created. As you can see, you just need to pull the picture in here. Then you enter that and the bot comes up with four different descriptions that could create the picture that we just gave it. As you can see here, all the four, they are quite different. So let's try them all. And you can do this right away by just going to the bottom of the picture. And there you can just click on the different numbers as you can see here. So let's test them all. And as you can see again, this window opens because we use the remix mode. All right, this will take ages again in the relax mode. So <laughs> I'll speed it up. And here we have our pictures. Of course, they don't look exactly like the other one, but I think they look pretty good, especially this one on the top left here. I think this looks really good. The other ones are maybe a little bit young, but this one I really, really like. I think I'll just upscale that and save it. It looks very good. All right, and the other ones here, they all look very good as well, especially one on the left here, but also the one on the bottom right. And now they, I think they all look pretty good. And you can see it's the same style of the picture that we gave. So if we actually scroll up here, well, this one is not quite ready yet, but if we scroll up here and see the original again, you see of course it's not the same, but the pictures we get are pretty damn good and definitely in the same style. And if we scroll down again, this one actually Midjourney did with water because it's a water somewhere there. So this is a little bit weird with the paddle there, um, not even holding it with both hands. But I think this one at the bottom left is really cool. This at the top right as well. No, they all look pretty good. So yeah, slash describe can definitely be a good tool to get inspiration. Let's test one more. So slash describe and I'll just put a picture of my dog. So let's see what Midjourney makes with that one. So he is chewing a stick and also has a ball toy in front of him. So let's see if Midjourney sees that. And you can see we get the four descriptions that we can use again. And Midjourney did not quite pick up that he is chewing on a stick and also did not pick up that this is a golden retriever. But yeah, let's say, let's test actually two of them and see what it gives us. Let's test, let's test three and let's test two. And as you can see here, that's not quite the right dog. Um, I don't think these pictures are that great. I mean, they are not bad, but I think the other ones are way better. If you look at them, of course, Midjourney did not really get it right with the green meadow. It made it more golden, but I think this one at the top right and also at the bottom left, they look really, really good. So if you look back at my picture, Midjourney actually did not really get the details at all but you still get some good results out of it and definitely some inspiration for prompts that you might want to use for yourself. All right, going deeper into creating your own art, there's one very simple prompt that you can follow, which often gives very good results. Of course, you can add all kinds of things, but just try this format, especially for beginners. First, picture type or style type, then your scene or subject, and then in the style of. So let's say for example, watercolor, red rose, in the style of dark magenta. And again, you can use all kinds of things. I just want to use dark magenta right now to make the colors really clear for mid journey. And here we go. Of course, I speed it up again. And you can see the results look pretty nice with not very many words. So especially as a beginner, just try to use these simple styles, these simple prompts, and you can get really good results. Let's try another one. 
let's try portrait of a dog in the style of Van Gogh. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce it in English. I am German, so I pronounce it Van Gogh. And this looks really funny. Midjourney did not just do it in the style of Van Gogh, but Midjourney did a Van Gogh dog. No, I really love that. Well, to get Midjourney to draw a normal dog, you'll need to change up the prompt a little bit, but that's for you to play with. But let's test one more, and with this one you can get really amazing pictures. Let's test an action shot of a lion in the style of National Geographic. And I think these just look so cool and so good. Look at them, I mean all of them, I think especially the one on the bottom right. Also the one on the top, no, they all look just very stunning. So as I already hinted at, in my experience you can get the best or really really good results if you use very simple prompts and few words. And I'm sure you love to hear this as a beginner. So my next tip would be when you're just starting out, try a few one word prompts or two word prompts and just make very simple prompts and not that complex. When you make them complex, the journey often just loses things and sometimes you just contradict yourself. So just let's try a few one word prompts. Let's try city, city at night and pirate ship. And as you can see, just with one word, it actually already gets a very, very good. Now here's also City at Night at the bottom left here, which looks probably like what I imagined, just <laughs> at daytime. Uh, but yeah, all the other ones as well. So of course you can refine that, but just one word prompts already give you very, very good results. Here we go with City at Night and I think, yeah, especially this one at the bottom right here looks exactly like the one I imagined. And when we come to the pirate ship, you can see the same, already a very good pirate ship. Now, maybe the sails are not exactly what I imagined on a pirate ship, but it still looks pretty damn good. And now we can refine that with a few more words. But yeah, I would say start out with a few words, especially when you're a beginner, and just play around. And now another very foundational thing I want to show you is how to change the aspect ratio. As you see, Midjourney is always one on one, so when you make a prompt, whatever that is, Let's just say jungle. After that you type dash dash AR and then whatever aspect ratio you want. So you need a space between that. So let's do 916. This would be the phone, just your normal smartphone aspect ratio. And then let's also do jungle in 16 by 9. And this then would be of course your television aspect ratio or also for a YouTube thumbnail for example. And here we go, you got the jungle and the phone, 9 by 16 aspect ratio. And then here you have the jungle in the 16 by 9 or the television aspect ratio. So definitely an important command to remember, so you don't just get one and one all the time. And the next thing you want to look at are permutations. And with permutations you can make a lot of different styles of pictures really fast. I'll just show you real quick. Let's say slash imagine a cute dog with a yellow hat. And for permutations you make this uh, <laughs> weird brackets. I don't know what to call these. If you know, let me know in the comments. What do you call these brackets? But yeah, you do them around the yellow and then you can just type whatever else you want to use. So let's type comma blue and comma red. And what's going to happen now is that Midjourney makes a dog with a red hat, with a blue hat, and with a yellow hat. So let's look at that. It also shows you the prompts here. Yellow, blue, and red hat. All of them. So you just confirm that by clicking yes. <laughs> Midjourney always asks you to confirm because it can get quite a lot depending on how many you use. But yeah, we'll also look at that in just a moment. And here you go. And these are actually really, really cute. I mean, especially the one on the top right and bottom left. And here we have them with the red hat. And then we have them also with the blue hat. 
good and you can also use multiple permutations in one prompt so let's say a cute dog comma cat with a green comma orange and don't forget these brackets around it and then let's also make head comma scarf and this is quite a bit now again midjourney will show you all of them if you just click here show prompts <laughs> you'll see all of the prompts we just created and you can read through them check if everything is right and if you're certain you can click on yes on top here again this takes a while because midjourney has to put a lot of them into the queue so i'll just speed that up and here we go our cute cat with an orange hat and I'll just scroll through all of them real quick. Cute cat with an orange scarf, cat with a green hat, cat with a green scarf, a dog with an orange hat and oranges in there for some reason anyway. Dog with a green hat and dog with a green scarf. Oh yeah, and dog with an orange scarf <laughs> as well. One last thing that you of course also can do is to look at how different versions look like. So let's do that real quick as well. And as you can see, I already tried that and I forgot the space between the V and then the version. So definitely don't forget the space. So you type a cute rabbit with green head, dash, dash, and then a space. Then these brackets, three, four, five, five point one. And Midjourney will do that prompt in all of these different versions, as you can see here. Then you just click on yes again and I'll speed it up. Okay, and here you go with version 3, they look a little bit <laughs> weird, not that cute. Version 4, okay, the one on the bottom left looks really, really cool, I think, yeah. And here we have version 5, okay, one realistic, the other one's, well, cute, definitely. Then here we have version 5.1, alright. So these are permutations, you can definitely play around <laughs> a lot with them. And one more thing we want to look at is image blending, so blending multiple images together. For that, you just type slash blend. And then you can see here that you can just drag and drop the images. Here at the side you see four more. If you click on that, you can choose to blend even more images together, which often doesn't get <laughs> that great of an output. But let's try image blending now with two pictures I've prepared here. Let's use this one and that one and let's see what's the result of it sometimes they look really really great and there you go well i think they definitely look pretty pretty cool and let's try one more we'll just drag a jungle portrait into here and a person into the other one and there you go you can see it on the jungle well the <laughs> legs are missing down here but other than that it looks pretty good all right, you can already create amazing images with what you just learned. Now it's time to get a little bit more advanced. For that, let's first look a little bit more in depth at the prefer option set command. With that, you can save every style or every picture that you love and combine them really, really fast to get great, fantastic, different output in a matter of seconds. Okay, let's say we create something beautiful that we just love. Let's say a vibrant green spring flower meadow with a white mountain range in the background during golden hour. Alright, now we just wait a couple of moments, I'll speed that up. Okay, perfect. And let's say you just love that spring flower meadow with a white mountain range and you want to keep it for the future to use it with different characters and different settings with different moods. This is where the prefer option set command comes in handy. So you just type slash prefer option set. And now you need to give that option a name so you can find it again. So let's call that Spring Meadow. Now the very important thing is that you click out of here where you see plus one more, you click on that and then you can click on value on top and can set your value. Now in here you just copy the command that you want. So let's copy our Spring Flower Meadow and paste it in there. 
Now you just click enter and as you can see, custom option Spring Meadow set to our prompt that we just used. And what you can do now is you can just type imagine and then you type dash dash Spring Meadow and you get the exact prompt that we just pasted in. So let me speed that up again. And there we have our beautiful spring meadow. And as you can see on top, it used the exact command that we set as our preferred option. And what you can do with that now is you can set different backgrounds, different vibes, different mood, different characters, and combine and create them really, really fast. All right, let's test it and show you what I mean. So let's create a character, let's say, a cute badger with an iron helmet and sunglasses. And of course you can create way more complex sceneries and characters. But let's look at our badger for now. Alright, pretty cute. Well, it's not exactly what I imagined, but it's good enough for now to show you what you can do with that. So let's set a preferred option again, prefer option set, and let's call the badger Bob. Bob the badger. And now we click outside again, here on top on value, and then we just copy the prompt that we want to have in there and paste it in. And our custom option is set to Bob our badger. And what we can do now very easily is, oh, by the way, when you want to make something realistic, just type photo of in front. So we make a photo of dash dash Bob on a dash dash spring meadow. And let's say with an aspect ratio of 16 by nine, which by the way, you can also put in the preferred option if you want to. And there we go, Bob our badger on our spring meadow. And I think I love the top right one. Oh, the top left one is also very, very good. Well, it's not exactly with an iron helmet and sunglasses, but it's still extremely cute. All right, another important thing is when you get tired of a preferred option or you want to change something up, then you type prefer option set again, and then you just type in the name of the option that you want to change. So let's say Spring Meadow, and then you just hit enter without clicking on the field here, just hitting enter. And as you can see, custom option Spring Meadow is now removed. All right, but since I want to keep it, let me actually put it in again. And then after we have done that, let's put Bob in a few different sceneries. So we just type our imagine photo off so it's realistic. And then dash dash Bob and wherever we want to have him. So let's say during dash dash sunrise, which is a prefer option that I use for myself quite sometimes. And let's try a couple of more. And there we have Bob in a matter of seconds at a beautiful spring sunrise, in a sinister forest, and in an urban environment. And if you have a few different characters, environments, or moods, you can just go through them in a matter of seconds till you find something that you absolutely love. So let's try Sarah in a few different environments and see what that looks like. And here we have her doing sunrise, in a forest, in a city environment, and with our spring meadow. And of course, you can compose and put together all kinds of different images and set prefer options. So let's try a photo of Kolya in an urban environment and let's make it dramatic. And then let's try the exact same thing. Photo of Kolya in an urban environment. And this time let's make it lighthearted and see the difference. And here we have drama and lightheartedness with the same character and the same setting, but two different moods. Perfect! Now that you can create and save different moods, sceneries and styles, let's look at how you can create more consistent characters. Let's say you create a character that you absolutely love, and now you want to keep using that character for different scenes and in different pictures. For that, many people use the seed command. 
To find the seed of a picture, you need to go up here, click on Add Reaction, and then you need to find the envelope reaction. I got it right here. If you don't have it, just go into the search bar and there you just type envelope. And there you see it right away. So you just click on that envelope and then you get the seat of that picture. As you can see there on the top left, you got the message from the Midjourney bot for your seat. So you just click there. And right here you can see the seat, that long number. So you copy that number. Then you go back to your Discord channel and there you can use the seed to hopefully create similar looking pictures and characters. So let's try that when we just use the seed and create something new. And as you can see it's completely different. It does not resemble the old picture in any way at all, despite using the same seed. And that's because most people understand what the seed actually is a little bit wrong. So let's look at what the seed actually is. Okay, let's say you created a new picture <laughs> and bear with me here for a second. I promise this is very simple. So you created a new picture and now you get the seed of that picture, which is one, two, three, four, five. And now you want to create a new picture and think with this seed one, two, three, four, five, you refer back to the old picture that you created like this. But that's not how it works. Your old picture is not the starting point for the new picture. The seed is the starting point, and the seed is also the starting point for your old picture. And this is way easier than it maybe sounds, because it really just looks like this. So the seed basically determines where your picture starts from. Everything else that happens after that is random and according to your prompt that you wrote. But now you also know how to use the seed command to create similar characters. First of all, you can use any random seed that you want. You don't need to extract the seed of your picture. Of course, if you create something you love, get the seed in the way I showed you. But if you just start out, you can use a random seed and see what it does. So let's try to create a consistent character with a random seed. Let's say Ruby, a woman with long red hair, a determined gaze, and military clothes in a comic book style and let's pick a random seat by typing dash dash seat and let's just say one two three four five six seven all right i'll speed that up and let's have a look how that turns out okay doesn't look too bad and when you now copy the exact same prompt with the same seat you get the exact same results. So let's just speed that up and test it real quick. If you change only one thing, your results will be different. So as you see here, I mistyped. So let's type gaze in the right way and we'll get different results. All right, as you can see here, our new picture with the same prompt and the same seat is exactly the same as our first picture and prompt. And as you can see here, our corrected picture is similar but it's not identical, it's different, it's not the same. So you can really use the seed command to see what impact different words have on your prompts. So let's copy that again and then change a determined gaze to a friendly gaze and see how that looks different from the original. And let's copy it another time and change it to a full body picture of Ruby. And then let's copy that full body picture and let's change one more thing here, long hair to short hair. And here we have our friendly gaze and it immediately looks way friendlier to me. If we look at the other picture again, the determined gaze, well, the character looks definitely very similar, but yeah, determined and friendly. Let's upscale two of them and then look a little closer at how they compare. Now here we have the determined gaze, yes, and now here we have the friendly gaze, definitely the same character with a slightly different gaze. So as you can see the seed command can really help you to get similar characters. And now let's have a look at the full body picture, here we have it with long hair and here with short hair. I don't know <laughs> what happened at the bottom left, but let's upscale picture one of both and see how they compare. And here we go, Ruby with long hair and Ruby with short hair. Definitely looks similar, 
Of course there are a few details that are not quite the same, but it looks very very similar. Alright, let's choose Ruby with short hair and in order to create really similar characters you need to copy the picture address. For me it's in German, for you it will probably say something like picture address, copy picture address or something like that. So you copy that, then you can paste it into a new prompt, like this. And then you copy your original description with the seed, like this. And then you can change things in here to create consistent characters. So let's just say in a cafe and see what that gives us. I'll just speed that up. Here we go. In a cafe, let's look at our original. There she is. And yeah, if we go back, definitely could be the same character. Okay, let's copy that one more time and try a few more things. Let's try in a very busy cafe surrounded by other people. And then let's also try instead of in a cafe in a dark and sinister forest. And one more thing, let's try during a beautiful spring sunrise. Alright, and here we have our picture in the forest. That looks pretty similar. Doesn't look too bad at all. And here we have our picture in the cafe. Definitely looks similar as well if we compare it to the original right here. And here our picture from before. Okay, let's start to upscale some of these. Let's upscale the, the fourth one over here. The, um, let's see, the first one over here. And let's upscale the, well, the first one looks great as well over here. And here we have our spring sunrise. Let's also upscale the first one. And let's compare them. Alright, I think they look great. There are of course a few minor differences. This is something that you cannot really do something against. You can make them even more similar with a lot of rerolls. But yeah, I think they look awesome. One very important thing though is if you see our original image on the left, it's on a white background. If you refer to a picture with the link like we did, you definitely always want a white background, otherwise you will refer to the background as well. And it will not change as easily as it did here. Of course there are more things you can do, like weights or different commands, but I rarely ever use them. And I don't think they are particularly useful. Especially not when you are a beginner or advanced. But if you want to have a tutorial about them as well, be sure to let me know in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video right over there.